one, two, three, four. everyone. We welcome you to Freedom's Church. We're so glad that you've joined us for worship here in person and online through live streaming. A few announcements for us. One that I do not have a slide for yet, but I will, is that we are going to be providing meals for family promise that is resuming, and our week will be September 11th, and it will be at Slumber Falls out at the camp and so we will be providing the meals the evening meals that week and we will have a sign up uh, for that Betty it's in the back um, along with several other sign ups uh, for you so if you're saying I don't have anything to do well you don't have an excuse because we have a lot for you to sign up for along with family promise for that week in September we are needing help so that we can rotate folks for our PowerPoint and live streaming operators are needed. Um, and if interested, you can sign up in the Narthex for that. There is a sign up sheet there and it's just providing the help with us live streaming. We will run everything with you. We will show you how to do it all. We've got Andy up there this morning already and Chris helping out as well. We are needing ushers as well. We will be resuming some things and in, in September as well in terms of offering plates 
um, for uh, during worship. And so we are going to need help for people as they greet people, as they come in to help us with the offering as well. So make sure you sign up for that, and we will show you what to do with that too. Uh, if you're interested in joining a small group, we do have sign-ups in the narthex for that. And for Bible study, special interest group, whatever you want to do in that group, study a book, um, do some spiritual formation, whatever you like, and then a social group as well to go out and enjoy some of the things around the area together and get to know each other. So sign up in the narthex. If you want to sign up for all three, you can do that. Confirmation, we are having an interest and registration meeting on Sunday, October 7th at 11.05 a.m. over in the Church Activity Center. This is for rising 8th graders and older for our classes coming up in September, which will begin September 11th. And, of course, every Sunday we, were ha we are having Children's Sunday School. that We release the children following the children's moment, and today Ms. Betty Shreve Shriver will be leading us, uh, leading the children. I'm going to go with you, maybe, sounds like. Um, so anyway, please, the children will go afterwards, and we always have a fun time, a lesson, and arts, and all kinds of fun stuff. Wow, that was a lot of information. Like I said, you don't have an excuse for saying, I don't have anything to do. So it's always fun to be a part of things at the church, I believe, and so please join us for any and all of these things. Also, I, know, I think they built a ramp yesterday. Am I right about that? Yeah, so that's going on too. Did that go well, Steve? Hot? Oh, good. Started early and got done before 11.30. Good. Well, I look forward to seeing pictures from that. That's always a good, good group of folks that help with the Texas ramp project. Well, we are here to worship God. And we are servants of God. We serve God in our lives and how we give of our time as we care for one another. And so our first hymn this morning, if you're able, please stand as we sing, You Servants of God. Please join me in our call to worship. God's goodness is poured over us. God's blessings abound in our lives. In the darkness, God abides with us. In the light, God dances and shouts with us. Holy is God who is present with us at all times. How, How grateful, grateful we, we are, are for, for God's, God's presence, presence and, and compassion. compassion. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our praise song. 10,000 reasons, bless the Lord, all oh my soul.
It's just an incredible thing to be able to come and worship the holy name of God. Worshiping God, the God who is always with us and provides for us. Even in the most challenging of times, God is there with us. And the most joyous of times, God is with us too. We sing these songs, these hymns and praise songs, and let the words just wash through your heart and your soul and your mind as we come now in this presence of one, each other and the Spirit of God. That gives us great hope, joy, and love, and certainly peace. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share and pass the peace of Christ with one another. Peace to you. Peace, God. Peace, my friend. to invite the children down for our children's time. <coughs> Michael, come on down. All right. I asked Joe Wade, was, I mean, not Joe Wade, Gage was so good to let me have his friend up here with me because, uh, of course, we know Bucky. And if you're not from Texas, well, do you know that's so funny? All our friends, like in Alabama and Florida now, they're like, oh, Bucky's is so wonderful. And I'm like, yes, we've had Bucky's forever, it seems like. So it's a great place. But I got Mr. Bucky here to help me out because I want to talk to you about something. And when I have Bucky do his hands like this and bow his head, what's uh, not very good, but how's he, what is he doing, do you think? Praying. He's praying. So we learned that to do the praying like this. And why do you think we do it like that? 
because we're praying to God, right? We're talking to God. And also, like, for some of us, if you're like me, sometimes I want to see what is everybody else doing. And so I will close my eyes and put my hands together so I can be still and I can pray. But we, of course, let me give you that bus you don't want. So, um, of course, we can pray any way we want to, right? We can pray when we're in the car, right? We can pray in school right before we take a test or, get, or do something important. We can say, God, help me. We can pray anywhere. And so today, Pastor Dave is talking about what's called the Lord's Prayer, or in some churches, they are call it the Our Father Prayer. Now, when Jesus was praying this prayer, when he taught his disciples, he would say, and, and the language, the Aramaic language, he would say, Abba. Excuse me for that. Abba. Do you know what Abba means? Abba means daddy. It's like saying, he was saying to God, daddy. Oh, daddy, who is in heaven? What is your name? How is your name? And he then goes on to pray, asking for God to help him live on earth the way in which God lives in heaven, his whole kingdom here on earth. Isn't that pretty cool that he could just talk to God and say, oh, daddy. And do you know that when we pray to God that we can say, daddy, we can call God father. We can just say God. We can say creator because you know what? Do you know what? God has so many wonderful, beautiful names that we can pray to God. And so you can have your very special prayer conversation with God any way that you want, okay? And so I just want you to remember that, that when you pray to God, you are having a talk with God, a conversation, because God is indeed your friend. Okay, now let us pray together. So let's get our prayer positions ready. And I want you to repeat after me, okay? Dear God, our Daddy, we thank you for your love. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our families. We thank you for this church. Amen. Very good. Thank you all so much. And with that, remember how much God loves you. All right. Now, y'all have the same watches. Now, we do have uh, nursery for five and under, and we have Sunday school uh, for older kids. So y'all go on back. Every, there's a place for everybody is what I'm saying. Well, I'll have you stand if able, and I want to hear you sing your bestest and loudest of what a friend we have in Jesus.
Please be seated. As we come to the Lord in prayer this morning, uh, a couple of folks we want to be in prayer for. One is Nora Sines, uh, who is Gigi Har- uh, Mortisons, and of course Doug's mother-in-law. And we want to. She is at Resolute Hospital dealing with some health concerns, and hopefully will be released in the next few days. Uh, also continuing to pray for Dickie Harbeth, who is at New Braunfels Regional Rehab Hospital in New Braunfels, um, recovering from a stroke and doing well, making that good rehab process there at, at New Braunfels Regional. I want to be in prayer for many others in our community, those that are dealing with great loss and grief, those that God knows what is on their hearts. And so let us go to the Lord in prayer focusing on a moment here in silence to center ourselves in God's presence. Let us pray. Abba, Father, we come before you knowing that we can take anything that is on our hearts Anything that is creating anxiety, sadness, pain, we can take that to you in prayer. We acknowledge that your presence is here with us and that we are indeed present now in this moment, here and now with you. We lift up these that are in need of your healing power, your healing presence to help them in their time of recovery and guide them and strengthen them, be with those who love them and those who are caring for them. And Lord, we pray for those whose hearts are broken this day due to loss, perhaps the death of a loved one or loss of job or loss of certainty about health, questions in their lives. And we ask that you wrap your loving arms around them and hold them in this time of uncertainty and grief to bring your hope and comfort and peace. May we be instruments of your healing power and presence to just be with people on the journey of life, that we uphold one another in prayer and support. We pray for the ministries of this church as we seek to serve you in this community, in this state, in this country, and in the world. You know each need, O oh God, before even any voice is given to the need. We just pray that we will trust in you to guide us and to protect us and to help us as we live this life through your grace May we pray boldly the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Offering him today as we give thee but thine own. Please stand as we sing and prepare our hearts for offering.
all that we say and how we live our lives, we are to do it gratefully and knowing that God is present with us. And as we give of whatever it is that we give to God, whether it's through our money, through our time and talents, God blesses that. And so we bring that knowing that we give offerings through a variety of ways online, whether in the mail or here at the offering box and someday through using the offering plate. We know that we ask God's blessings upon that offering and also the offering of our lives. So let us respond with our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. Our Holy Scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. And just to set the stage, as you know, in this part of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus and his followers now from Galilee have left Galilee and they're walking. They're on a journey to Jerusalem for what would be that final week of Jesus in Jerusalem before his crucifixion and resurrection. But along the way, they're seeing many people, and they're picking up new followers along the way. And Jesus is always encountering and teaching, teaching about the kingdom of God. This is now an event from Luke 11. He, Jesus, was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, Lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is, uh, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you, for you. For everyone who asks receives, and for everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him of God? The words of Jesus Christ. It is what we have in Luke's version, what we call the Lord's Prayer. And it was like, Something said to to them by disciples, Lord, teach us to pray. Now you're wondering, well, we just had a recitation ourselves. The Lord's Prayer is very different than what we just read in in Gospel of Luke, Pastor Dave. And yes, you are right. There are two versions of the Lord's Prayer in our Holy Scriptures. One in the Gospel of Matthew and this one in Luke. The one that we use liturgically in churches is the one more found in the Gospel of Matthew, of which we read earlier, a longer version of that, and then with a benediction added on by the later church 
what we call now the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, that many Christians learn at an early age and we recite in church very often. And it's an amazing, amazing story, an amazing prayer. And some things I really love about this. I love the fact that Jesus now has been teaching and he has been praying. His followers will see Jesus praying sometimes in crowds and with them, and sometimes Jesus prays by himself. But then they ask him a most amazing question. They said to him, looking at him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples, John the Baptist. And so apparently the disciples of John were so eager and earnest in their prayer life, the followers of Jesus says, we want to be able to pray like them too. Isn't that an amazing observation, an amazing statement? And they say to him, even though they've been following Jesus for like some three years, you would think they would know how to pray. Lord, teach us to pray as John taught teach us to pray. Perhaps that is something even for us today. We need to go to the Lord ourselves and say, Lord, teach us to pray. Why, why prayer? Why is prayer so um, important? Well, first, we know that prayer is important. Right now, some 53 years ago, would be the anniversary, it's the anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Many of you remember that and that most wonderful mission and day. It landed on July the 20th, and, and as they, the astronauts had descended now from their lunar module, and that they come down and landed on the, the surface of the moon, these astronauts now were in a territory of life that no one had been before. Very few people had been orbited around the moon. They were the first to land on the moon. And they knew they were going to set foot on the moon if they landed safely. And they really began to give a lot of thought about what this would mean to, to them. They had Michael Collins. He was, he was the commander of, of the ship that was orbiting around them, around the moon, that would go back and, and be there when they would blast from the new moon to go back to Earth. It was Buzz Aldrin who commanded that lander that landed on the moon, and of course, Neil Armstrong, the first person to set foot on the moon. And when Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, they had about six hours before they would open up the door and go out. They had to prepare themselves to go out, put on their space suits, do a lot of other things. They had a lot of time on their hands. But one of them... Buzz Aldrin had thought about that time already before they got there. You see, Buzz Aldrin was a Christian. He was a member of a Presbyterian church in Houston. He was an elder. And before he left, he got permission to take a couple of things with him. One is he took a copy of a prayer, a copy of a prayer, and that he would read, he wanted to read aloud. In fact, he wanted to read this prayer over an open mic from the surface of the moon back to Houston, back to the earth where everyone could hear. Well, there were some in the world at that time who were not really for that being a public event, but he wanted to do it anyway. They said, okay, Buzz, you can do that, but be careful with the words and how you say it. And what he used was a wonderful prayer that was written in the Second World War. It was written for soldiers then. And it was a prayer that he took with him. It's called the Prayer for Protection. And it was written by a minister, James Freeman, for all the soldiers in World War II. And it became now so famous that Buzz Aldrin took this prayer with him and read. And here is a, a part of that prayer. I think we have a slide there, Andy. There. I don't know if you can read that very well. Hard to see, but let me read this for you. It says, it's part of a longer prayer, the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. That was his prayer for that day. He also took a second thing. Many people don't realize he took a small communion set. I think we have that too photo of that. And this is a small communion set. So in that six hours that Buzz Aldrin is waiting to go out to the surface of the moon, falling behind Neil Armstrong, 
he says a prayer, and he takes communion himself. He, he knew this was going to be a special moment, not only in his life, but in the life history of the world. Many people don't know these stories, but it says to me a number of things. One is this. He used this prayer for protection that was written for soldiers in the Second World War to pray for himself and for Neil Armstrong and for Michael Collins, protection there on the moon, and communion, the first act that he could do as a person, communion with God, which, which prayer is. Prayer is communion with God. So perhaps today, we too can learn and from God about teaching us to pray. And we look at those words, and yes, Jesus uses the word Father as translated, and it was Aramaic word meaning Abba, and earlier when uh, Pastor Sonia was uh, teaching the kids about the word Abba, I was thinking of the 1970s Swedish pop group singing Mamma Mia and Dancing Queen and things like that. And I hesitate to say that because now some of you have those songs in your head now, and you will be the rest of the day, including during the sermon. That's all right. You know, you can, you can do that. You know, but it is a word, Aramaic word for, for Father. And it was because Jesus was wanting them to understand the relationship that exists between God and them. And one of the, the images that he uses is like an earthly father. The earthly father had a very special place in the life of their society. It was the father's name in which you got your name. It was the father's identity. And, and Jesus was always wanting them to know that the love of God has for you is like the love you can experience here on earth through a loving, godly father. Now, there is sometimes a, a challenge we have with that. We have to be careful because we know in our own life here in the world and as we're living here on this earth that not all of our earthly fathers are ones that we want to hold up in high esteem. I thank God, my God, every day that my late father was one person I knew that I could hold up in high esteem. My father, and though he was not perfect, but he showed amazing unconditional love for me as a child. I learned about God and about faith and Jesus Christ from my father and my mother. So I understand this, this identity that we have. And Jesus would talk to them and they would understand about their own faith fathers going way back some 2,000 years before about Father Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and all those who are part of their faith. So they understood that. So when Jesus says, our Father, and when we say Father, we think of this as that is a godly person that we want to think of that is someone that we can understand and identify with, a different kind of Father for us. And this hallow would be your name. That is, we're going to make your name sacred in our lives. We know that there is sometimes a huge gap, a huge gap in our lives between the sky and the heaven of our expectations for ourselves and the world and then the earth of our performance. Sometimes that is a huge distance. The sky of our expectations and the earth of our performance. Jesus is saying to them that he is the one, and God's love is what there to bridge that gap, that God is there. And this, that I want us to go back now to a part of our, our version of the Lord's Prayer, is this, that Jesus is wanting them to know that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we don't have to wait and understand or even try to, to identify that only the good and holy sacred things happen far away in some place that we would call heaven in the presence of God, that God's will is to be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth, that means right here, right now. Right here, right now. And he goes on to tell two stories. Jesus loves to teach with stories about suppose one of you has a friend and you go to midnight and you're knocking on the door, probably scaring everybody half to death. Hey, a friend has showed up and you're thinking, well, what kind of friend shows up at your house at midnight? How come you don't have food for yourself? Well, we don't have to go into that so much saying, look, 
the door is closed, we're already in bed, why are you bothering me? But because it is a friend, you work through all of those reasons why you don't want to, but when you love a friend and neighbor so much, you do it anyway because of your love for that friend. You will give what has been asked of you in a time of need. What this is is a great hyperbole example of going out of your way to know you're going to help someone whom you love who needs help. And all of us do that. All of us do that at times. We'll go out of our way to help a family uh, member, a friend who is in a time of need. It's kind of like a prayer, the prayer that guides us. Or for like a parent, if a child asks for a fish or an egg, we don't instead give them snakes and scorpions. At least most of the parents that I know. I know a few parents who just out of sheer, sheer way of being funny, they might just show up with, with a snake and a scorpion. Now, I will share this with you. Before we, before we moved to Texas, I, was, I knew about snakes. We lived in Florida. I've lived in places in the, in the country where we had all kinds of snakes. I've never had to deal with scorpions before ever until moving to, to Texas. And I really identify a scorpion as this, is this. A scorpion is this. This is God's little reminder to us that evil exists in the world. That's, that's the definition of scorpion. God's little reminder that evil exists in the world. I don't know what else. I'm sure there's some kind of ecological contribution that scorpions make to life. Maybe they're eating other little bugs. I don't know. At time, I'm rooting for the little bugs, not the scorpion. But the point is this. Because then of a parent, a father, a mother, who indeed loves the child, when the child asks for food, you don't give them something harmful to them. No, not out of love. You see the big point that Jesus is making to us. Practical points of a life of prayer. I think prayer is vital. Prayer is important. And I love the fact that the disciples now, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus says, and in the expanded version, okay, when you pray, our Father, our Father, not my Father, our Father. How many of our prayers, how many of our prayers often are like this? We haven't really given much thought to God or to the Spirit or to our life and faith, but then something happens, something that kind of shocks us, gets our attention, and it could be any number of things. Now suddenly we find ourselves in a certain situation in which, oh no, I need help. I can't get out of this. What am I going to do? And if you don't know where you're going to find your help from, family or friends or anybody else, then we might turn to God and we'll say to God, oh Lord, help me now. What am I going to do? That's a very common prayer, is it not? And there's nothing wrong with, with saying a prayer like that. One of the most uh, famous prayers of all is, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. Have mercy upon me. We realize the me parts of prayer, but prayer is more than simply that personal pronoun of me and I, even though oftentimes that's how we go to the Lord in prayer because something's happening to me and I need some help. Jesus says, our Father who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Help us together. Do you see the larger part of this? is that we come together as a church, and it's not about coming to God with our own individual prayers and needs and wants, desires, all of that, even though that's important. It's about the larger picture, coming together as a community of faith, saying, what do we need? And what do we need to do? What kind of people do we need to be together? Jesus is always about the collective with them. In fact, Jesus would get mad sometimes at the disciples when they wanted to go on their own, do their own thing, go their own way, say their own stuff. Jesus says, no, stay together. Stay together. Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. I think we need to learn from this. I can tell, and you can too, I can tell uh, a person who has been involved in times of prayer in their own life, and I mean honest prayer, open prayer about being wanting to be closer to God the best we know how to be through the life of Jesus and Christ. We can see that, and we can see sometimes when people aren't. 
one of the first things we all should do whenever confronted by anything in life is take a moment and stop and pray. And it's not just stopping and praying. What the Apostle Paul says, have a life that is the life of prayer, to pray without ceasing. What does that mean? That means to be always aware of the presence of God all day in life. There is no time that God is not present. There is no place that God is not present. God is present everywhere, all the time. That's the power and nature of God. It becomes upon us now to become aware of that. Simply so be aware of that. And it's the easiest thing to do. It's the easiest thing to do, yet sometimes it's the most difficult thing for us to do because it involves us having an attitude, an open mind and heart about the awareness of the presence of God. That's communion, the presence of God. Communion, when we take the elements of the cup and the bread, it's the presence of God that we know in Jesus Christ. Being aware of that all the time. Wake up with that on your mind. Throughout the day, have that on your mind. When you go to bed, have that on your mind. It's not that you've got to be in an audible prayer all the time or reading a Bible verse all the time or singing a song all the time. No, it's simply this, that in all places, all times, all occasions, God is there, even in those times, even in those places where it seems God is the last thing that's present in there. That's our, our limitation of understanding the presence of God, not God. You see, the question to me, and I've said this a number of times, the question isn't, is God with us? To me, the larger question is, are we with God? That's the question. That's the question. Are we with God? God's always there. God is always around us. Thank God for that. To teach us to pray is simply this, being aware of of the loving God and God's presence around us all the time, and that God is wanting to work with us and through us, as us, in this world, through our hands, our feet, our voices, our minds, every day on earth as it is in heaven. And on that day, some 53 uh, years ago, or 54 years ago, I've forgotten what year Apollo 11 landed on the moon suddenly, but it was a over 50 years ago now. And even on the surface of the moon, Buzz Aldrin was absolutely convinced that God was there. That was some new thinking for people. They thought either God was some far away in heaven or nowhere at all. And Buzz Aldrin says, you know what? I'm taking God with me on this rocket, on this ride to the moon and back. And what a great example that is for us all. What it should be teaching us is not just to pray, but have a communion life with God that is so strong that that guides who we are, what we say, what we do, how we think. My goodness, would that make a big difference in our world today in so many different ways? I think it'd be quite easy for us to find all kinds of places in life where we can't see the presence of God, and goodness knows there are people who are trying to make that happen. You turn on any form of media, and it's hard to find it. That's not what is driving so many people as, as God's love and grace and goodness in their lives. It's what we want, what I want. And so often times when we hear someone go to prayer, it's all about them. Me, 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 I, 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 what I want, what's going to be good for me at the expense maybe of anyone else. And Jesus says, the prayer is this. How about all of us? How can I be better to help all of us? How can we all be better to help even more of us in life? This was the words that the followers were listening to Jesus that day, listening on their way. And it's good that they heard this because they will be praying themselves big time when Jesus reaches Jerusalem. I love this story as it goes through and in this gospel story because later on, Jesus, at his most amazing human moment in his life will be on his knees sweating profusely as if bleeding drops of blood 
agonizing over the decision now being handed over to the Romans and going to the cross and praying to God, is, is this really your will? And not my will, but yours be done, O God. Thy will be done through me on earth now as it is in heaven. And as we pointed out that on this journey a few weeks ago, the fabulous story that kind of ends the parable of the Good Samaritan of Mary and Martha, we have now Jesus there in Gethsemane praying to God. After the time of the disciples in that upper room on that Thursday, before he would be handed over, arrested, and tried and crucified, praying almost in agony to God, take this cup from me. But Jesus was obedient, even to the cross. Teach us to pray. Ever heard that phrase, that adage, people have said, be careful what you pray for? Be careful what you ask for, be careful what you pray for, because it might just happen. Well, I think we can be careful in which we pray and how we pray. But the prayer life guides us not only in a time of prayer, but throughout our lives. There are people who are already able to respond in a godlike way at almost any time because they're already decided how they're going to respond. And that is a time of prayer when we show up to help people in need, no matter the circumstance, even these that seem like extreme, if someone shows up literally in the middle of the night for help, or if our children ask for food, we're already there with a good answer because we've already prepared ourselves. We know what we're going to do. That is prayer. When we pray to God each day to help me this day, O oh God, in life, not just to alleviate some circumstances that I'm in, but help me, O oh God, to help your world, your creation, your people. That's a prayer. And so when the moment comes, I believe I want to be ready. There's no question. There's no doubt in my mind. I say, yes, I will help. One of the things I like to say to people when we're, tr when we're asking to, for, for donations for our Matthew 25 offering that goes out to help people in our community and in our church in times of need is this. I want to find every way I can say yes before I say no out to help someone. How can I say yes before I have to say no? And what I want to strive for is to provide what I call legitimate help for legitimate needs. It's easy to say no in life. It really is. We don't want to be bothered. We don't have time. We're busy with so many other things. And who is among us is not simply every day feeling overwhelmed just with the normal everyday stressors and challenges of life. We all can feel that way. But it is through the prayer life then that will help us to understand and put things in perspective. Not everything has to be an anxiety thing. Not everything has to be a stress moment in our lives. Not everything can be overwhelming. When we give it to God, and then God speaks back to us, which is the point of prayer, is understanding then how God leads us in all of life. Providing daily bread. Not just bread for tomorrow and next year, daily bread. And not by bread alone, but by the word of God. Forgiving each other for sins and trespasses, even times when we're indebted to someone, or they may feel indebted to us for forgiveness, saying, I want things to be right and equal and good among us. And then forgiving ourselves in that way, too. Because it's God's kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And Jesus simply wants us to be a part, a living part, a productive part, a vital part of that God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So say your prayers. Say your prayers today at mealtime. Say your prayers at bedtime. But then say a prayer in a different way. While you're walking, while you're driving, while you're out, simply is this. You don't have to say even the audible words or even think uh, specific words. To simply this, be aware of the presence of God 
all around you all the time. And see how you can participate in that presence of God. Through the people that you see and who you're with, how can you love them? What keeps you from loving them and being with them? And then seeing how God is blessing us all. I end today with this. A most fervent prayer recently for us around here is a prayer for rain. Yes, we need rain, and yes, every day I'm praying for rain. And, and some people around us in life are getting the benefits of my prayers for rain, except for us right here. It doesn't seem to, to rain on this corner of, of the world. I don't, I don't know why. Even recently when we had some rain, it rained to the north of us, and it rained to the south of us. It just didn't rain right here. So I thought, okay, next time there's a chance of rain, I'm going to drive about 50 miles south and pray for rain, so you'll get some right here. I, I'm about 50 miles off now on my prayer for rain radar, so I'll just drive. Now that's a crazy example, but we understand the need for rain and things in our life, and what we pray for is this, that God's will be done here and now. And we'll pray that God's Spirit will provide and give us strength in the meantime while we wait for the rain. That is what it is to pray. Teach us to pray, O oh God, every day. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, our God, we do give you thanks that we can pray. And we give you thanks for the words of Christ who indeed has taught us to pray. And let us take this teaching as disciples, to understand that how much you love us and give to us and provide for us and help us to do the same for ourselves and for each other and for our community. Let us be a people of prayer in the big ways and small ways, but at least in the everyday ways all the time. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing song this morning is Amazing Grace, the beautiful version of Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Will you please stand as we sing together?
God is indeed forever with us. That's good news, good grace that should sustain us, provide for us each and every day. There are a number of folks who have been signing up for our small groups, uh, the fellowship groups and Bible study groups. Please look at those lists on your way out and just let you know that in a couple of weeks, we're going to have these signups out for several more weeks, and then we're going to contact everybody on those lists to determine then what our next steps are going to be. So right now, it's simply prayer stage with this and sign up stage with this and then Sandy and I will be in touch with all who have signed up about how we're going uh, forward uh, with with these groups so thank you for doing that on this day my friends God is indeed with us and let's be for one another a lot of things going on in our life in our community and certainly our world there are people today in our community in our church fellowship hurting a lot today because of some losses in life we want to be with them and certainly in events in our, in our state, and our nation, and our world, what can we do? Well, we can pray. And we can pray for God's will to be done, at least through our lives, through our words, our examples, and then see what the Spirit will do from that. It is good to see you all here today. So on this day, my friends, I pray as we leave this place today that we'll strive to live simply love generously, serve faithfully, speak truthfully, and pray daily, and leave everything else to God. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath strain from your heart canyons of mercy so deep I could never depart father your wonders are endless open my eyes to believe awake my soul
by morning your faithfulness shines like the sun heaven's on fire alive with the brilliance of love father your wonders are endless open my eyes to believe awake my soul 